muscles to throw away those girdles. On the floor, ladies. Legs directly in front of you. Lift. Hold. Drop. Once again now. Lift. Hold. Drop. Pass away. You feel those muscles tighten? Lift. Remember, you know you're not cheating your old buddy. You're cheating yourselves if you don't stretch those muscles. Once again now. Lift. Hold. Good morning. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> morning. Is Mike ready? He left half an hour ago. Hmm? Don't you remember what today is? Don't tell me it's Wednesday. Don't tell me I got up this early in my day off. No, it's Tuesday. Mike went down to the precinct early to start the special classes and identification procedures. Yes, folks, can a small town girl find happiness with the chief of police? I don't know. I never met the man. <laughs> First dear sergeant, then lieutenant, then on to the big time. Well, it's lucky for you, because now you'll have friends in high places to help you get out of the kind of trouble you're about to get yourself into. Mm -hmm. Did you look at your watch? Know what Riker's going to whisper in your ear if you're late? You're lovely. Mm-hmm. I'd invite you in for a cup of coffee, but I know you're in a hurry. And bright, too. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. And that's our exercise for today. Now the news. At this moment, the police are still searching for clues to the identity of the killer. Fire officials are understandably concerned about the senseless killing of one of their ranks. Seaside and Locust. It's a bad one. Uh, you better get somebody down there quick. It's moving pretty fast. Some action on this. Two firemen have been killed. I want to know if it was the same gun. Well, the preliminary just came through on it. It's a 38. They're trying to match the bullet that killed the first fireman. Then I say we may have real trouble here. 
Olda, why is he here? Why do I have to come out of my office on a day like this and look at a face like that? Put that man in the drunk tank. Morning, Lieutenant. Webster, you look like you had nowhere to go and nothing to do. I'm in homicide if anything comes through. Surprise everybody. Get the muster on time. What's he all burned up about? It's a bad choice of words. Another fireman was killed this morning. Means that someone out there has declared war on the fire department. Hmm. I guess he got reason to be less than happy. And I apologize for what I was thinking about him. Oh, Webster, uh, Gillis wrote. I gave the letter to Danko. He's in the locker room. Thank you. Hey, man, how's he doing? OK, uh, Dick. Willie reported the first day to the police department in his hometown, right? Meets the watch commander, gets introduced to his new lieutenant. The first thing the lieutenant says to him is, now, Dick, <laughs> the hair's too long. <laughs> I smiled my winningest smile and was about to hit him with my what does long hair have to do with being a good cop bit. But he never gave me the chance. He just told me if I wasn't regulation length before tomorrow, I could apply for a job at the post office. But being home is worth it. I'm glad I decided on the move. My father's all right now, and we have that kind of great relationship I always thought we'd have. And then there's Jennifer. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> and then there's Jennifer. <laughs> Dave. Uh, sorry. Dave's name. Hi, I'm Chris. Christopher Owens. Terry Webster. I'm reporting in from the Academy. Mike Danko. How are you? Hey, go on, man. I, uh, I want to hear all of it before muster. And then there's Jennifer. Mm -hmm. I've known her most of my life. You know, grammar school, high school, the whole thing. The whole thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I missed her more than I knew. Could be I'm hung up on her. Uh, uh, I knew that going back home had a woman in it somewhere. Uh, hey, man, uh, there's an empty locker back there. 28. Why don't you try it? Could be. I'm hung up on it. How, how's it going with you guys? I think about all of you a lot, about the times you had. Pretty good times for the most part. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I guess the most important thing is that I'm happy back here, being back home. Uh, 28's jammed. Go on, man. Anyway, I miss you guys. Hey, I even miss Riker. You can tell him for me that he's nothing but a pussycat next to the man who calls mustard in Grand Hill, Ohio. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna love that. Hey, man. My tie. Sorry. Uh, Webster and Danko. 30 seconds, you're gonna be late for muster. Webster, I wanna talk to you after muster. Yes, sir. Yeah. Webster after muster means after muster, not 10 minutes after, right after. Sorry, Lieutenant. I want you to meet your new partner. Uh, Lieutenant, we usually assign new partners uh, from the duty list. Why the formality? When a rookie comes out of the academy, he is assigned his new partner in this manner. It's tradition. Officer Christopher Paul Owens, I want you to meet Officer Terrence Beauregard Webster. Um, nothing personal, Owens. Uh, Lieutenant, I just came off of three weeks of very hard night duty, and you know how it is breaking in a new rookie, uh, the paperwork and the indoctrination. Why don't you give me a break, and Owens wouldn't mind, would you? No. Anyway, there are older, more experienced officers around here. You'd be better all the way around, yeah. sir. Goldstein, Goldstein is the one to break a rookie in. I heard of him, sir, up at yeah. the academy. You couldn't ask for a better man. Knowledgeable, patient, one of the best cops in the precinct. That's the kind of man I'd like to partner with. The kind of new rookie deserves. What do you say, Lieutenant? I say that something about this conversation reminds me of you and another rookie, Webster, Officer Gillis. You remember him, don't you? 
Now, Peter, the two of you, I got a man out there who likes to kill firemen, and I've wasted too much time on this already. <laughs> I'm a senior rookie. You're a senior partner. So uh, hold on to that thought, okay? Okay, let's go. Our call number is 009. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Owens. Now, uh, eight months in the field has taught me two things. How to get along with Lieutenant Riker and how to survive, which might very well be the same thing, but that's just surviving. You don't drive the car until I've had time to check you out behind the wheel. I put in my time behind the wheel of the academy. Yeah, that might qualify you to drive the chief of police's car, but not the car that I drive in. You're the senior partner. Yes, that's right. Now, I wonder where a guy like that fire freak holds up when he's not killing anyone. his wife and kids, ain't he? Poor guy. Yeah, that's him. You know, he used to come in here every Saturday morning with his oldest boy. He must be going through hell now, you know? Lost everything. Nothing left. Are you all right? You want I should get you a doctor or something, Mr. Limbo? Yes, I'll pay for the machine. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. No, no, don't, don't worry about it. Listen, I'll talk to the boss and you can pay for it tomorrow or something. You go on home now, okay, Mr. Limbo?
up with you before you left. What time is it? There's one or two other little things that I'd like to go over with you. If you have the time. Ten o'clock at night. Look, uh, we've gone over a lot of reports. <sighs> All that extra paperwork. And a lot of little things. I know, but... Let but... me finish, let me finish. I haven't finished. I'm hungry. And I'm tired of all the reports and all them things that you keep calling little. Hmm? Matter of fact, I'm tired of you, Christopher Paul Owens. I guess I'm just excited with the job and everything. Maybe I'm trying to get too much in in one day. I'm sorry. It's okay. One more thing. Mm. Thanks for today. You taught me a lot. It's okay. Learn quick. We can finish up tomorrow. I mean, those. No, 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 no. Tomorrow's my day off. It's your day off as well. We don't work days off. You can work your day off. I will not work my day off. I'll see you. Hey, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Let's hit the courts. Sorry you're late. Let me tell you what sorry is. Sorry is what you're all going to be when I astonish you with my speed, accuracy, and dazzling football. Oh, that's what sorry is. That's sorry. Yes. Tell me it's not true. That's your new partner, eh? <laughs> what you doing here? I live here. Since when, man? Since as soon as I get my stuff into the apartment I rented yesterday. Gress is my wife, Jill. You mean right here in this building? Where I live? Where we live? It comes under the Fair Housing Act, doesn't it? Glad to meet you. Hi, Chris. Mike told me about you. It's a conspiracy. It's got to be. Who sent you here? Lieutenant Riker. The owner registered an empty apartment at the precinct. I didn't know you lived here. You do now. Ah, too late. I'm not going back to the Y. I've been there since the academy. Well, I'll move my pickup so you can get to where you're going. Why don't we help him move in? You know, we could kind of make him feel at home. What the heck, game? Oh, we weren't sure we'd get a court anyway. Look, he's new and he's probably lonely. <laughs> well, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> I got no choice. I mean, I've heard of singles, but me against me, it's, it's no game. You think they would have finished painting it before the kid moved in? Hey, isn't it a great apartment? Oh, yeah, it's real nice. Yeah, it looks really livable. It's a doubt. If I were you, man, I'd keep looking. Hey, look, it's going to be just swell when we get it fixed <clears throat> up a little bit. No, next to the room at the Y, it's a palace. It's dumb. <laughs>
Yes, Alder. Captain Whitfield on 1715, Lieutenant. Strike it, Captain. Alder, I want you to set up an emergency schedule. Every available man works extra duty, cancel all days off, special days off, and all vacations. This nut started a fire in some garage, and he's killed another fireman. That makes number three. We're gonna ride shotgun with the fire department. I want two units on every single alarm that comes through. If he sees police at the scene, maybe he'll think twice before he kills another fireman. Lieutenant, uh, we could get some help from some of the outlying precincts. No good, Alder. Nobody knows where he's gonna strike next. The other precincts have the same predicament we do. There's gonna be no outside help. No disrespect, men, sir, but do you think riding shotgun to these alarms will stop it? I hope so, but I'll tell you one thing. 43% of the firemen in this city did not show up for work today. If we ride shotgun, maybe we can hang on to the other 57. Well, you really can't blame them for being scared. I'm not blaming anyone. I'm worried about what happens in this city if there's a major fire, and I don't care who started it, the fire bugger. What a how. I was way up there one morning near the top of one of those hundred-foot trees trimming away some branches. And my father called up to me and told me the letter came. I went down like a squirrel. It's from the academy. They accepted me. <laughs> well, let me tell you, if I'd have been from uh, 50 miles outside of Spokane... Spokane. It's pronounced Spokane. Well, yeah, it don't make no difference. You're the dude that left it, not me. That's the kind of country that a city guy like me dreams of being grown up in. Yeah, but every small town boy dreams of going to the city to make his fortune. Uh -huh. <laughs> How old were you when you first started logging and climbing those trees, Chris? Well, about 14, I guess, during summer vacations. It's easier for me than most kids to get a job. Why was that? Did you look older than you were? No, nothing like that. My uh, father ran the lumber mill. Uh-huh, had to be. Hello. Yeah. Ah, I got it. No, no, I'll tell them they're both here with me. Yeah, right away. Ah, that's Sergeant Older. It seems our day off is a thing of the past. How come? The freak just killed another fireman. We're on full alert. They want us to run escort on all fire calls. Let's get a move on. Rikers waiting. I'll call you later. Bye-bye. Mike, I'm on duty tonight. Maybe we could have dinner together later on. Fire unit number 19, rolling to 1939 East 12th Street. Repeat, Ludlow Niner, Ludlow 7, code 3. Over. Call it in. Control, this is Ludlow 
Hey, you, hold it. Stop. Hey, hold it right there. Give me that. My name is Joseph Phillips. I, I own the building. Oh, my God. He almost killed me. I thought that guy was after me. Well, the point is, he wasn't. Have you got a permit to carry a concealed weapon? Yeah, I got a permit. Three dead firemen, that's my permit. It's all the permit I need to protect myself. And I'll tell you something else. I'm not the only one. They've got a right to protect themselves. I'd say more than half of them are armed. You know what just happened here? He could have killed an innocent man. Or he could have been the killer. Why not? You don't even know what he looks like. Could have been him. It could have been any one of them out there. Without you with the scheduled Rikers guys, I only get 20 minutes. Okay. Oh, could I have a hamburger medium, please, and a cup of coffee? Hey, you know what a deer does when he runs scared? He shows the white underside of his tail. The other deer see it, and now there's trouble. Well, if we uh, see any white tailed deer, we'll know we're getting close. The point is, the deer understand deer. It's his first 12-hour shift. Uh, you got to take that into consideration. Look, humor me for a minute, okay? There's a kind of a game they taught us at the academy. It's called role-playing. I don't know if they had it in your time, but... I'm gonna hit him. I swear I'm gonna hit him. All right, forget it. It's probably a bad idea to begin with. You know what's worse than never having a good idea? Having one and not knowing it. It's another game. To learn how to play it in the field. It's called analytic deduction. Yeah, and it's called analytic deduction because the lieutenant hates it when these two start to assume. It's easy. It works like this. I kill a fireman. Why do I kill a fireman? Uh, maybe it's got something to do with the uniforms. Then why not mailmen or soldiers or even cops? Why does it have to be a fireman? Okay, he's got a gripe with the fire department. Maybe he wanted to be a fireman and uh, they flunked him out. Mm. Maybe he lost somebody that he loved in a fire and he blames the fire department for it. You know, cowardice or not caring enough to save a life or something. It's good. Revenge. The indiscriminate killing of firemen. That'll work. Now why go through all the trouble of starting a fire? I mean, why not just follow one of them home and get him in the dark? Why risk a crowd? Maybe he feels safer in a crowd. Or because he has more firemen to choose from when a unit or two rolls up to put out a fire. Yeah, well, why does he have to choose? Because he's after a certain type. Is there anything the same about any of the three dead firemen? I don't know, but I think we ought to check it out with Riker first thing in the morning. That's good. That's good. Two, I would call coincidence. Three, all firemen, all dead, all dark hair and mustaches, I wouldn't. Are you saying you think maybe we got something, Lieutenant? Maybe. Just maybe. Three of you skip muster. Check out your revenge theory. Anything else you can get out of that computer? Deaths by fire, surviving family members. It's a long shot, but it's a shot. What's your name again? Owens. Owens, don't get too upset if this doesn't work out. I guarantee you'll have other hunches. in the last six months that took any lives. Five lives in all. 
Why only six months? If it's the revenge thing, it's likely it would have been only a short time ago. Passion tends to die with time. I like that. Passion tends to die with time. I'll do a double check on this. Maggie, would you pass me through to Central Communications? Give me all information on these deaths. You've got it all in this room? The files, cross files, even on the fire department? Mm-hmm. Won't take long. We'll have the cause of the fire, the uh, names of the victims, the survivors of the media family. Fact is, Paul Bunyan, we don't use axes to cut down trees anymore. Three out of the five lives were lost in the same fire. Gas heater exploded. House burned down before the fire department ever got to it. It's way out in the sticks somewhere. There's no way we can tie a revenge motive into any of that. The gas company, maybe, but not the fire department. It says here the reason there was only one death in the second fire was due to the bravery of the firemen. It would have been a lot worse if it weren't for them. The fifth death was self-immolation. No good. None of it. Maybe... Maybe we just ask bad questions. I mean, we asked the computer to identify any deaths due to fire. It didn't have to do with a fire. It could have been something that involved a fireman in a more personal way, like an accident or a fight. It's worth a try. I think so. Three weeks ago, a 32-year-old woman by the name of Francine Lombo and her two sons, one three and one eight years old, were involved in an accident with a fire truck. She had her windows closed, radio going full blast. I don't know, maybe the youngest kid was screaming anyway. She didn't hear the siren. They never knew what hit him. Upon impact, her gas tank exploded. The three of them burned to death. That's an ugly story and an ugly way to die. And I hope someday people learn to drive with one window open so they can hear things coming. What's this got to do with our killer? Uh -huh. The driver of that truck was also killed. Here's a picture of him. Dark hair, mustache. He looks a lot like the other three. If the motive's revenge, the driver's dead, then maybe our man is going to go after somebody who looks like the driver. You said it was less than a coincidence with three, Lieutenant. What do you call it with four? Well, it's a long way from proving anything. Now, listen to me, Danko. You're building up to something, and you're holding the kicker back. Will you tell me what it is, please? It's the husband. Jack Limbaugh. He's a chemical engineer. Oh. Well, it's far from an ironclad case, but it's worth looking into. That's being done. Webster and uh, Owens? That's right. He used to keep regular hours, but that was uh, before his wife and kids were killed. You know about the accident. Well, Mr. Lembo's not in his apartment. At least he doesn't answer. Look, we uh, haven't got a warrant, and we can't require you to let us into Lembo apartment, but uh, if you would invite us in, it would... I can't do that. Look, I'm just the manager. Maybe you could call the owner? Call us in. Ask Riker to get us a warrant. Uh, maybe you can tell me where Lembo works.
Well, the doctor signed your release form, but you're going to be awfully sore tomorrow. I know someone else is going to be sore. He's going to be so sore. Thank you for the introduction, Officer Webster. Is he going to be all right? Well, I thought he was, till you came through the door. Now I'm not so sure. When a police officer draws his service revolver, he does so because he needs it in the pursuit and apprehension of a suspect. When that same officer finds it necessary to fire, that weapon better be aimed at the suspect and not at God. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. That's not good enough, Owens. There are no warning shots fired ever. If they know how to teach you one thing at the academy, it's that. What goes up must come down. That bullet could kill someone. When you fired that warning shot, you gave him just what he needed, time to escape. It was his first time, Lieutenant. Lemba was unarmed. There was no way that Chris could have been 100% sure that he was our man to begin with. Shooting him under those circumstances... Is exactly what he should have done. Lembo dropped the 38. Ballistics checked it. It's the same gun that killed the three firemen. We had him. Just heard about Chris. Did you see him? Talk to him. Is he okay? Oh, yes, I saw him, and he's intact physically, that is. I guess we can be thankful for small favors. I'm not thankful, Danko. No small favors are coming my way. For instance, why does this precinct have such an overabundance of greenhorn rookies? Why can't we have some of the older, more seasoned veterans? I don't know, maybe. I guess they're assigned to precincts that need the personnel. Danko, I need policemen, not kids that shoot at the sky, at God. They stop telling them at the academy, God's on our side. Uh, maybe you forget who you're talking to, Lieutenant. I, I'm still a rookie myself. Well, I'll refrain from comment on that, Danko. You know what I have to do now? I have to go inside and call the fire department and tell Chief Bird we've let the firebug slip through our fingers. Uh, look, I'm sure Chris tried. I'm sure he did what he could. Oh, good. I'll tell him that. I'm sure that'll make all the difference in the world. Give me Chief Bird, will you? I get out of here, Danko, please. You or Mike, Lembo would be behind bars right now. Instead, he's out there somewhere, maybe killing another fireman. What happens when another fireman is killed? How am I going to deal with something like that? It's almost as if I had killed him. If you made one mistake, don't make another one. Learn from it. Go on and try and wipe it out of your head. How do you do that? How do you get that thick? You can just wipe it out of your head. With practice, man. Practice. Hello, Niner. Investigate report of unauthorized person seen climbing natural gas storage tank at Garden Refinery. 126 North Lorimar. Code 3, over. That's not his M.O. You think it might be Lembo? Why not? He's got to figure we know who he is by now. Maybe he figures this will be his last number. Go out like a bomb. Control, this is Ludlow Niner, 10 4. He's been up there like that for 10 minutes. I tried talking him down, but all he said was call the fire department. He's some kind of a nut, if you ask me. That tank is filled with propane. I don't want to mess with that, so I called you guys. It's OK. We'll handle it from here. I don't want the police. I want firemen. I want a lot of firemen. You get them for me. 
I'm gonna blow this thing. You tell them that. You tell them if every fire engine in the city isn't here, they'll never be able to stop it. The whole city will go up in flames. 20 minutes. It goes in 20 minutes. I can pick them off from here with a rifle. Sure you can. If the bullet rips through that hull, we got hell on earth. What if I sneak around back? I can get up there before he knows what's happening. Forget it. Terry, if it wasn't for me... Get off that. This ain't the time for it. I'll call Riker. Tell him what's going down here. Tell him the world ends in 20 minutes. I'm dead, I know that. I don't care. I just want to take as many of them with me as I can. Move it. Hey, Lembo. Uh, let's talk about it. Uh, maybe we can help each other. Control, this is Ludlow 9. Patch me through to Lieutenant Riker. Urgent. Tell Webster we're on our way in Owens. I want you to talk to that man. Don't let him get so hot under the collar that he's gonna blow that thing up. Over and out. Danko, I need you. Older, I want every available unit at the garden refinery. Call the fire department, tell Chief Bird we have the man cornered on top of a propane tank, and we're gonna need fire units out there fast. He hasn't done anything yet, Lieutenant. He's waiting for his audience. According to his timetable, there's only four or five minutes left. Well, uh, we don't have time to send a chopper up. If we did, he'd see it coming miles away. We can't fire a gun at him. Best thing would be to get a guy up there. Right. Me, Lieutenant. It should be me. Why you, Owens? Because I'm the only man out here who can climb a 100-foot tree in less than a minute and a half. I can sneak around back. I can get up there, Lieutenant, before he sees me coming. He wanted to climb before, Lieutenant, but I wouldn't let him. Not because he's wrong, but... I thought we had a little more time and hoped for another thing to do. But we seem to be out of time, and I don't see anything else to do. If you do get up there without that thing blowing, it's going to take an experienced cop to bring that man under control physically. That's why I'm going up with him, Lieutenant. No good. You'll slow me down. If we stand here and argue about it, uh, he's going to slow us down permanently. All right, come on. Get a move on the tour. Thank you. Uh, Lambo, this is Lieutenant Riker, SCPD. Come on down from there. Oh, what? You gonna kill me? Go ahead, you murdered them. My wife, my children. You murdered my life. Uh, we have to pick the side that's being painted. Lambo, listen to me. This will not get them back. Get a rifle. If Owens and Webster don't get up there in time, we're just gonna have to take a chance.
first time I ever... Never. I know where you're at, man. My God, I know where you're at. All right, you two. It's all settled. It wasn't easy. I finally got it together. Now, Owens, you're going to start riding with Goldstein tomorrow. Why? Well, Goldstein, you remember him, Webster. The one with all the patience, knowledge, and experience. The kind of officer every rookie deserves as his first partner. Yeah, well, Lieutenant, I've been thinking about that since we had our little talk, and, uh... Well, you know what I think of Goldstein? They don't come any better. Oh, agreed, agreed, yes. Well, there's 20 years difference between Goldstein and Chris. Uh... It's a lot of gap. Well, that's a lot of hogwash, Webster. If you're going to say something, I wish you would say it. Why don't you just let it go for now? Uh, I think it'll work out. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Let's roll. Hey, Chris, Chris, don't do that. What? Look, who's the senior partner here? You are. And why do I have to do all the work? What are you talking about? Look, I've been doing all the driving since we teamed up, right? Well, you got to pull your own weight. Now, come on. Let's roll.